everybody welcome back to my channel today I want to talk about something that is super important to me that I've been experiencing the past few weeks as you guys may have known on my profile I talked about how I just had a surgery go check it out on my profile I talk all about it and I have YouTube's about it today is talking about post-surgery and how to take care of your body specifically your gut after being on antibiotics now just before I start into anything Yes, I am a certified health coach. However, I'm not a medical professional. I'm not a certified or a an MD. So if you have anything specific um, that you are concerned about, I'd be glad to tell you my experiences. However, I might guide you to another health professional as well in the medical field. So today I wanna to talk about that, number one, everyone's body is different. And so there's not a one size fits all approach to your health specifically in your gut and your brain those two with your hormones are the most diverse and unique to you and so anything that I say today it may benefit you but it might not benefit you there might be something else that's going to work better for you so I want to just clear that up in the beginning that these are the things that work for me that have also worked for a few other people that I've worked with specifically for healing the gut after you've had antibiotics. So I actually had to go through two rounds of antibiotics within a three week period and I knew it was going to have an effect on my gut because what an antibiotic does is it kills any bacteria foreign or living in your gut um, essentially so that you know if you're trying to cure a sickness, trying to prevent a sickness, it's going to clear all that out of there so that there's no risk. Now I had it before and after a surgery to prevent any risk that I'm going to get sick or get an infection from them opening up my body, being exposed to the air, foreign objects, what have you. And as you're doing that, I actually had to cut out my probiotics because if you're going to try and have antibiotics killing the bacteria and then you're going to try and feed your gut probiotics with good bacteria you're just gonna be doing fighting yourself with a battle that you're not gonna win so the gut in itself is extremely complex and whether you're on antibiotics or not it can be flared up with various symptoms and issues so antibiotics itself it can lead to other things like leaky gut but you might also have other pre-existing conditions like SIBO, IBS, GERD many things that you know it could affect you so you have to really peel back the layers figure out what the stem core issue is and then go about repairing the gut in a certain way so to start off um, like I said it's more about um, rebalancing the gut after you've cleared it all out from the antibiotics so make sure you're done with your antibiotics before you start this process once you are the first thing that I did so I reintroduced probiotics in the forms of a supplement as well as a food source, multiple food sources. The one pet peeve that I have is that there are many coaches out there I've seen who think all you need to do to heal your gut is throw a probiotic at it and you're good to go. And unfortunately that's not how it works. You can take a supplement all day, the strains and the species might be wrong for you, and you might have a reaction to that specific probiotic if it's in a food source and it's fermented for example sauerkraut I cannot eat sauerkraut I have a response to it it's a high histamine food and it just does not work for me so just keep in mind that the probiotics that you take that's just the baseline and we're going to go into more of that here in the next few minutes so probiotics like I said I take a supplement I take just thrive I love it it's spore based so when I digest it the spores will open up and start to grow in my microbiome and a lot of the times depending on the supplement that you get and depending on where you get it from your probiotics could be dying as they go into your system. so like I said you're gonna want to find ones with strains you're gonna add diversity that's the key thing here is we're adding diversity to your gut to help it grow the healthy good bacteria and avoid any of that negative unhealthy bacteria, H. pylori, um, 
having any yeast infections, things that we don't want in our system to happen. So the next thing to think about is what are those probiotic foods that you can have? There are many options. Um, typically a fermented food like a kimchi, a sauerkraut is great to add in slowly, one cup per serving, max. Kombucha is an option as well. Some people do have a negative response from kombucha too because of the sugars with the green tea and you just need to be careful and mindful of what your body's gonna respond well to. I actually can't do kombucha myself unless I'm doing it sparingly, like once in a month or once every few months. Um, other foods that you can get probiotics from, like I said, if you are going to have like a kefir or a fermented yogurt, if you are vegan or vegetarian, coconut. You can do coconut yogurt, amazing, and it has sometimes in the trillions of the different levels of probi live probiotic microbes in it. So that's another option for you guys. On the flip side, you're adding the probiotics in as the base layer, but you need to feed them. And so what you feed them with? Prebiotics. So a few prebiotic foods that you can do um, would include things like an artichoke, onions, garlic, chicory root, dandelion. Um, there's many others out there that we could discuss. Apples have some prebiotic factors to them, flax seed, those are some of my favorites. And then, um, like I said, you're going to continue to increase the diversity of your fruits and vegetables, trying to do at least four to six servings of vegetables a day, and I'm not exaggerating. If you're healing from a surgery or you're healing from getting sick, you don't really need the carbohydrate sources. I would flip to more of a fat source, still having a pretty high protein intake, so you retain some of your muscle mass. Yay. If that's one of your goals, doing that and adding in the prebiotics and probiotics. Now there are some supplements out there that include both. Just be cautious and weary if they are going to be the full strain or the total amount that you're needing to get for your intake whenever you talk to your certified health professional that you're going to consult about it. And on that note of eating diverse foods, you need to make sure they're foods that you can digest. So maybe you're somebody that has a really hard time digesting red meat. I actually don't eat a lot of red meat anymore because it is harder for me to digest and I feel like in my stomach, it's just really hard for me to break down. Usually the higher fat, saturated fats is harder for me. So doing more organic chicken or I'm doing a vegan protein powder, um, something that's gonna be easier for me to digest. But specifically those fruits and vegetables, making sure you're cooking them. It's actually harder for you to digest raw vegetables a lot of the time. So roasting them in the oven with 350 degrees for like 20 to 40 minutes, mm, caramelized, yum. So that's a great option as well. Now, other factor besides food, you want to make sure you're increasing your water intake, sometimes doubling it from what you normally do helps flush out some of those toxins and get your body back to normal pH balance. Our focus is anti-inflammatory and increasing those healthy antioxidants that are going to speed up your immune system, your recovery, and overall your health. Like right now, my nails and my hair, it's like the healthiest that it's been. And I've increased my vegetable intake. I'm doing like two servings of fruits a day, dark chocolate, yum. and a few complex carbs but not very many so that just goes to show that when you add into that diversity it can make a huge difference also there are some natural herbal tools that you can use adding in natural herbs and spices garlic powder um, doing red chili pepper flakes adding in some chives oregano parsley cilantro those herbs all have different uh, micronutrients that can help your gut and healing it too. Overall, um, it's not just about your food intake, but just your overall health, your mental capacity and being avoidant of stress and overcoming stress, and then also cell, cell regeneration. So one thing that I've been doing is intermittent fasting, or you can do full fast, full day fasts, to help with that cell regeneration. There have been a lot of studies recently that the more you do intermittent fasting, 
it's actually going to have a higher rate of rebuilding the lining of your digestive system, but also it helps with your cognitive functionality and your cellular regeneration in your brain. So there's been a lot of benefits. Like I said, it doesn't work for everybody. There's some days I can't intermittent fast because my blood um, glucose level goes too low and I have to eat. So you have to figure out what works for you. I hope some of these tips help. And once again, do you know that if a coach is telling you all you have to do is take a probiotic to heal your gut, you really need to find somebody else or do your own research. Because at the end of the day, that is just as bad as going to the store and getting over counter the drug to say, oh, this is what's gonna fix your problem. So just my thoughts, I hope this helps somebody. Reach out to me if you have any questions and I'm super excited to get back in the gym here soon, fingers crossed. So take these to heart and let's keep everybody healthy going into the new year.